back to Harbaugh. One week ago today, the Washington Post broke that story that Marco Rubio is actually the son of immigrants, not Cuban exiles, as he said. It was a significant error in a political biography that put heavy emphasis on his son of exile storyline. As the Wall Street Journal reported today, quote, many in the GOP think Florida Senator Marco Rubio can help the party appeal to swing state Hispanic voters, possibly as vice presidential nominee, but with a position on immigration that includes opposing a path to citizenship for illegal aliens and opposing the DREAM Act, which would provide a chance for some undocumented youth to become legal, how big of a draw would he have been among Hispanic voters? Joining me now is Congressman Luis Gutierrez, Gutierrez, Democrat of Illinois, who's a chair of the uh, Immigration Task Force of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, and Congresswoman Loretta Sanchez, Democrat of California. Thank you very much, members of Congress, joining us on this. It seems to me we've got a very interesting thing here. Now, this fellow, this member of the United States, States and he initially was criticized for portraying that his parents filed after, uh, fled after uh, Castro took control in Cuba. In fact, as of Friday of last week, his Senate biography, his official biography read, in 1971, Marco was born in Miami to Cuban-born parents who came to America following Fidel Castro's takeover, which is not true. But the biography was only changed after the revelations about the timing of his family moved to the United States. And now reads, Marco was born in Miami in 1971 to Cuban exiles who first arrived in the United States in 56. So they're correcting the record once caught. That's the old question. Do you only tell the truth when you're forced to? Congressman Gutierrez, you're, think, you're thinking as a Democrat from the Midwest, what does this mean to his marketability as a national candidate? Well, number one, uh, look, uh, Marco Rubio's parents came here. That is, his mom and his dad applied for a visa, got a green card, because they were seeking a better future for themselves, new jobs, economic prosperity, not because they were fleeing a totalitarian regime there. It's interesting that although he benefited from that very uh, generous immigration policy, now he wants to take the drawbridge and say, sorry, no more need a plier come by. He stays silent while in Alabama, they passed the most draconian uh, kind of show me law. I mean, in Alabama today, Chris, uh, an undocumented woman taking her two American citizen children to a library to apply for library cards commits two felonies. Uh, you can't walk without being discriminated against in Alabama. 1070 supports that there. So he's out of line given. Why and does he secondly, do that? Why, let me give you well, I, 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 I think he does that. I think he does that. Why is he so anti-illegal because, because, immigrant or undocumented worker? Because, why is because he wants to appeal to a broader base of people. He doesn't look at the, he wants to tie himself, Chris. What he does try to tie himself is to the uh, refugee community which th that exists in Miami, right? He wants to tie yeah. himself to that. Listen, you want to know something? It, we have we have granted the most generous immigration policy. Uh, it's almost impossible to come from Cuba uh, illegally to the United States. The most know, generous you know, the immigration policy. Sand, We've right? opened our arms to them yeah. and embraced them as well we should, and yet he turns his back on others who seek okay. nothing but a better future in this country themselves. Congresswoman, give me your sense of this from out west in California, where most people who come to the United States come from the south, from Mexico and other Latin American countries on the continent. What do you think the feeling is about this guy Rubio who's been exposed basically as just another, not, not just another, but another person who came here because of economics? Well, I would agree with my colleague's comments. Uh, he got caught. His family obviously came for the same reason that so many families come from Mexico, from Central America, from South America, from Europe, from Asia. People want an opportunity here. And unfortunately, there's a big divide between how, for example, Cubans get to the United States and, and, and uh, have a very generous package of ability to become a United States citizen, whereas for example, uh, Mexicans don't. And so um, when you look at the Southwest, you're really looking at a predominantly Mexican-American community. You are looking at people who have fled, really fled areas like um, El Salvador and Guatemala and Honduras, Nicaragua, when, when they really did have dictators there and yet did not in many ways get the same benefits that exactly. a Cuban might if he fled Fidel Castro's home. So I completely agree with Luis Gutierrez.
I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a double face. I mean, he, he, he wants okay. to, he wants to look tough on immigration because he's a, he's a Republican. But the reality is that he benefited, as so many immigrants have benefited over the hundred, the the couple hundred years of the United States. This is a place that does better when we allow people to come here to work and seek a better life. Well, an editor on today's Palm Beach Post about Rubio says the following quote, the real issue is whether Senator Rubio sought to create the incorrect impression that his parents fled Castro's Cuba, an impression that would further dramatize his family story and boost his credibility among the rapidly anti-Castro exiles in Miami-Dade County. He might be forgiven for not knowing the precise year of his parents' arrival, but placing it on the wrong side of the Cuban Revolution is an error that, if not intentionally misleading, is egregiously careless. Let me try something by you, Congressman Gutierrez, that isn't exactly about immigration, but it's about ideology. Could it be that the reason he has been going around saying he came here, his parents, after Castro, is still ambitions? He's saying, here's a way of identifying myself, not as an immigrant, but as an anti-communist. Therefore, the right wing all across the country will say, hey, he's one of us. He's, he may look Latin American. He may be one of them in that sense, you know, ethnically. But he's really one of us because he's a right wing anti-communist. Look, his parents came here fighting Castro when he completely confected that. Sure, because, because you know, he is then embraced uh, by a broader, more conservative political community, and those are his credentials, right, his bona fides. Yeah. He comes, he understands that. When we now know that's completely, but moreover, just think about it, Chris. Think about the millions, probably, of people who have come here because they have fled totalitarian regimes. Sure. Uh, because they have faced death, because they have faced dictatorships, and they've come here to this country. I mean, when I think of what he does, shame on him. Shame on him for all of the great people and the great standard that America is in embracing those that don't have freedom in other countries. That he would exploit that for political purposes and for political gain just speaks volumes about why he's really not fit to speak about an immigrant community yeah. or to our Latino community in any form of leadership. I hope someday we get it's this problem true. solved in a fair way. I, we got to go pretty much, so Congressman, but one last thought, quickly, just quickly. I'm just saying that, you know, from a Latino perspective across the United States, they probably won't trust him after this. I mean, we really okay. need leadership, not somebody who makes up a resume. Well said. Thank you very much, Congress, Congressman Luis Gutierrez and my old friend, Congresswoman, who's a young person, but an old friend, Loretta Sanchez. Thanks for coming on the program again. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Hi, Loretta. Up Thank next, you. in search of super, super spy, William Colby, one of the most controversial CIA directors in history, I guess. We're going to talk to his son, who's just done a big documentary, quote, The Man Nobody Knew. It's hardball, only on MSNBC. Americans are always ready to work hard for a better future. Since Ameriprise Financial was founded back in 1894, they've been committed to putting clients first. Helping generations through tough times, good times, never taking a bailout. There when you need them. Helping millions of Americans over the centuries. The strength of a global financial leader. The heart of a one-to-one -one relationship. Together. For your future. This is the network, a network of possibilities. In here, pets never get lost. In here, every continent fits in one room. In here, you're never away from home. It's the AT&T network, and what's possible in here is almost impossible to say. AT&T. Well, it looks like Mitch McConnell's on the losing end of a big battle over college sports. The Big 12 Conference, which includes schools like Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, needed to find a replacement for the University of Missouri, which is trying to leave the conference. Well, earlier this week, word leaked that the replacement school would be West Virginia. But Senator McConnell made a late push on behalf of his alma mater, Louisville. That raised the ire of West Virginia fans, and Senator Joe Manchin threatened a Senate investigation if any lawmaker stood in the way of the Mountaineers' move. I've been to those games, by the way.